what is up getting ready to finally attempt removing that cube outdoor unit to put in this tall skinny bastard over there step one of putting in two of those and freeing up all this space right here so I can back my trailer in finally so I've got that pumped down I just closed the valves and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the lines and disconnect it I just hope everything is ready to go on this it should be the compressor like I said is a new takeoff of something else so hopefully it's good my stepper motors I put in last week for the heating they uh, just gonna leave them disconnected I'm gonna make a controller later for them so I don't have to worry about heat all the way till next year now and really if any of this stuff is like not that critical because like in that unit there I'm doing the exact same thing I got a the same variable frequency drive and the same compressor in it and it just basically the 24 volts AC from the thermostat latches two relays to do the 40 Hertz 60 Hertz step you know to, for the digital inputs on here that's all it does this board just adds a delay I have the low pressure I press the switch interface through it and a display stuff like that okay so said I won't be able to record too much of it busy I had to leave once I fart started the initial vacuum then came back and then I got that warm change the oil and there was a bunch of chunks that came out of that thing and it was just nasty and here's the thing that thing looks like hell but I bought that pump brand new when I did like a side job for a friend's boss uh, in California I think I might have posted a little bit about it years ago I mean this is like 2009 or 10 or something maybe it's been a while I bought that new for that job my own pump and then I've used it maybe 10 times and it's just been moved around since I've always had like a company truck with a with a pump on there you know until this last year so I've hardly used that pump last time I did my own unit I think I still had my company truck and used the everyday pump I usually use on the job and all my tools were on the truck so I just used that so now yeah I don't have a company truck and I'm have to get out all my old stuff, you know. So the pump looks like shit, but it's <laughs> the funny thing is it doesn't have that many hours on it. It's crazy. It's coming down. Put this panel on now. High voltage is in there. Low voltage I've in there except for just a couple lines. I got to figure out what's what on that reversing valve. I'm not sure if the reversing valve is uh, power to go to cool, power to heat, but it's 230 volt through the relay. So I'll have to just switch a couple things. Normally open to normally closed or whatever. Well guys, I had a big setback. Got this thing installed. Compressor actually runs fine. My controller works fine. Except for when I first hooked up the fan, it kept blowing up my little board here. I'm like, why does it keep blowing the board? And I had a second board mate and then it popped it on the back and it's basically just popping it like a fuse. I don't know what's different about when I was hooking this up inside and I was powering it up with the transformer from 120 to 240 and I think it was a little low on the voltage side, you know, more like uh, one of these transformers right here. It's a one kilowatt sucker. Uh, and everything worked fine. I've, I've ran this fan several times. Actually, I think... Take, you know, actually, the first time I ran these fans, the original, all the controls were in there, and all I did was interject, you know, the pulse width modulated uh, 0 to 6 volt speed command signal and ran them that way. Then I ran it with my own stuff, but through the transformer. But ever since I hooked it up out here and I took the DC out of the VFD into the thing, which is how it was hooked up in there working, except for I wasn't running the compressor, I had the compressor unplugged and a dummy motor hooked up to it, everything worked. And then I hook it up out here and boom, I'm like, what the hell? After I had all the refrigerant vacuum down and putting in refrigerant when I started, you know, and then I turned it on. Anyway, the only thing I can think of is uh, this uh, motor driver taking a shit, man. So I don't know if uh, I have close to 250 volts out here and just going through the diode and there. Maybe that voltage was conditioned. <laughs> I don't know, because the way those hook up in here is this inverter board takes power off of this inverter board right here but it just takes it off the rectified dc bus so i mean i can be able to really see the traces but there's plus there's minus 
high voltage. It's just gonna, it's just gonna come off of here. And I wish I could have driven this uh, this sucker directly, but it just it communicates, you know. So now I'm stuck to where I don't have fans, and I might actually have to pump this refrigerant out back into this unit and hook this unit up real quick just to have it running again, until I can go back and figure out something else maybe i could find um some of these motors i mean these are the, and plus <laughs> i kind of overheated this motor i hooked it up to a small vfd just to run it temporarily to think i can run the ac to cool the house a little bit before i shut it down it ran a few minutes it actually did off one of these small vfds wherever i just threw it oh, i'll put it in the, in the in the garage anyway but then it it tripped and i might have cooked this fucking motor these are just straight dc i think they call them vector driven it's the same thing that ECM motors use, but it uses, you know, electronic drive and it senses right when the winding, you know, it drives the windings in sync. And a VFD, regular VFD, it kind of runs them, but it's way off and then, you know, and it doesn't have that, it can't position sense, it doesn't rock. Well, there that sits in the back of the house for now. Till maybe another day, but now it needs a fan motor. The whole thing about that thing is, I don't want to put money into it. I got it for free, a couple of them. I still have one other one. There were four ports that I redid. If I would have had the time, torn open, or knew when the house was all being remodeled, I would have put in like four cassettes on the first floor. <laughs> got rid of this Goodman with the tear handler up way up high on the second floor, but too late now. So I had to put this one back on. Now I did get it a little closer to the wall, and it is a little narrower than the good one. It's a little pushing it, it's about four inches. You want, want a good six or something, so I'm kind of breaking my own rules. It uh, doesn't get a lot of sun over here, so luckily the, the sheet, this uh, stucco, you know, this is the north side, doesn't get hit with the sun for very long during the day. So it doesn't trap heat so much back there but you can see uh, you know lining it up there's a bit of room you know right here probably get my trailer through a little buy this one if this one wasn't here so I'll just still got to change this one out at some point but now summer's here pretty much almost already here I don't know if I'm gonna do that before summer might wait till fall on that one now of course got to see how everything's gonna go with the markets and everything because uh, you know, got politicians that are trying to cripple us. That's a whole nother story. Anyway, this one's back up and running. Banging around. Dude, this unit here, I've abused the hell out of it after I built this. I put DC power directly from the solar into this VFD and it's run the unit. I've got an ECM motor that I've taken apart and relocated the module part down there. And that's just a regular motor. This is the same thing as those motors, basically permanent magnet, you know, vector driver, whatever they call it. See a little sticker in there sent me data when I put the new bearings in there. I actually bought bearings and put them in that motor. Just... So this one's gonna continue to run for the summer, I think. Still two stage like I made it. Just waiting now to see if I had to add a little pinch of refrigerant. Subcooling is down about 3.9. So we'd still up about 42. Now normally you would just start adding some refrigerant here, but this the newer units, our efficiency units with expansion valves, because you got a high load, you want to hold off because it's probably flooding, you know, a little more than it will when it's down to temperature. And then you'll stack up a little more refrigerant in the condenser once uh, it comes down to temperature. But it probably has lost the pitch because I took the refrigerant from this unit with my recovery machine and purged it so I lost a pinch and then I moved the refrigerant from this into the carrier, you know, tall boy there I have. And then when that wasn't gonna do it, I kinda moved the refrigerant back. So I'm sure I gotta add a half pound or so. I might actually just go ahead and do that. And then uh yeah, just wanna let you guys know. I, I hacked this in real quick earlier because I wanted to see how much power this thing you know, was pulling. Of course, with a new one, but no such luck. 16 amps, 245, 246 volts. I'm telling you guys, the voltage is pretty high at my house. 
about 2.4 kilowatts, probably about right. Power factor 0.58. That's going to be way off because it's uh, charging up capacitors. So uh, this thing, I don't know, roll it off. But yeah, it's just going to have to stay like that. And then uh, I have one sh other short, one of those skinny units I'm trying to get my hands on that I want to shell and use for the case to basically rebuild my water heater's heat pump there, take it off the wall, put it down in that little white one, which was supposed to be matching the white ones I was going to put here. Now I don't know how it's going to work, but when I do do that one, I'm thinking I'm going to take out the Fredericks and reconstruct the water heater's heat pump to basically have some changeover valves. And what it would be is like if I'm, uh, for the summertime, I'll have it uh, send liquid to the high wall you know, instead of to the outdoor coil, well, it'll be redone. The evaporator on the outdoor coil, so, so just anytime the water heater's running, it's gonna cool the garage a little bit. And then, um, cause I'm gonna want it to cool the garage when I wanna sit in there, and sometimes the water heater's, you know, of course, I come home in the afternoon, well, nobody's been using the water then, so I feel like I would only be able to run it so much for the water got too hot, so. I need the other changeover valve to like just open up and add a loop. Uh, part of the part of the outdoor coil will be condenser coil, out, you know, and then part of it will be evaporator coil when it's winter or whatever. When I don't want to <laughs> steal heat out of the garage, so it'll be, that'll be a cool little project. It won't be a, a project that shuts down, you know, all our cooling up in our bedrooms like when I fuck around with this thing. And about time to finish and clean that up. That thing's worked excellent for two years though still working perfect and mostly running off of solar just need more batteries if it runs more than once after the sun goes down it drains the batteries and then the second time it'll run off the utility but if I had enough batteries I could easily reheat my water tank you know several times off that uh, solar inverter charger I have the idea is to almost run I mean, just to run all the hot water on it and all the cooling of my garage on those solar panels. Right now, this thing's not on the, getting assisted by solar like it was last year, so we'll see how that works out. But I probably won't run it really cool in the peak of the day like I was. I'll put it back up a little more conservative. <laughs> so, see how things go. But, again, you got to see how everything goes with the political climate because, you know, just getting parts and stuff is starting to become a bitch. Refrigerant shooting up. Now they're attacking 410, so 410's uh, about 400 bucks for a 25 pounds, which is total fucking bullshit. And they're going to keep doing it. And some of the brands are going to go with this new Refrigerant 32, some are Refrigerant 454, and I think there might be another one out there. It's like beta and VHS all over again, and it's going to suck. <laughs> well, it's going to suck mostly for you guys because I'm kind of a, I'm not the field tech anymore. So just do like troubleshooting stuff and some other stuff like that now don't even have a service truck anymore so, so anyway i'll continue with my projects oh and the last thing i did want to say is like i spent you know some time making all those circuit boards and everything in that thing i might still use that thing but i don't know but even if i don't it's like that was a lot of i got to use it to get good at that little mill i bought you know learn some more new things with some electronics you know keep keep myself sharp a little bit because i hadn't been doing too much electronics in a while so no loss i didn't put a lot of money into it I, you know bought a handful of circuit boards a few times until i stopped ruining those you know and made several versions of that controller until i was happy with it but i was developing a skill so I'll be using that skill for a more new projects I'm, I'll be working on. So, cool. And uh, you know what? The refrigeration part and the controller for the refrigeration part in that carrier unit worked. It was the fan interface for some reason. Before I even having nothing to do with my controller, just for some reason, as soon as it got to DC, I don't know if it was just a little too high a voltage. I don't know. Or if it's conditioned through that other inverter board before it passes through to the fans inverter board i don't know but it it just i wired it up the second one and i wired it up straight through just a diode rectifier and directly into it with nothing else hooked up in it 
and I hooked some fuses up, but it was just blowing them. I might mess around with it later, but I knew I was going to run out of time. So uh, that's just that. Probably not going to try switching it again now that summer is pretty much upon us here in Phoenix area. With that, I'll catch you guys later. Just temporary defeat, but uh, I'll kick its ass later. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff.